Okay, I'd like to get started. So the second uh, meeting of the University Senate's now, and then we'll have a brief report from the uh, police chief, the new police chief, and a um, lengthier discussion of the IT reorganization uh, plan. Okay, so um, the next item on the agenda is IT reorganization. So I'd ask uh, Provost Coltrane to come up, and he's the, um, he's going to give a PowerPoint talk about what's going on with IT reorganization, kind of an update, and then um, we will then have a talk from Greg Bryant, uh, who's a senator and a research faculty, uh, and uh, there'll be plenty of time for question and answer. So, Scott, I'll let you go to it. Thanks, Bill. So, I want to spend some time uh, going over how we got here and what we're doing and what we're in the middle of. Um, I want to give you a brief update about IT consolidation. There is one more next sec. I'll let you read that while Greg walks up here. I think there's some questions for you. Okay, so um, we're going to end this meeting at 5. I'm going to let Greg speak for a few minutes. Then um, they'll, they, I will ask for notices of motion, should there be any, and then we will adjourn the meeting. However, um, I think he is willing to stay longer for questions and answers, and I, are you willing to stay a little longer too? Okay, so why don't you go first, and then I'll stop you at five, we'll adjourn. Five? All right, um, thank you, Scott, for um, letting me come into your house and say some things. This is, um, computing is my field. I, uh, I've been a uh, software developer for 42 years. I know that sounds strange. Um, the, uh, uh, when I first programmed on this campus, there were two computers on campus. Um, the, uh, basically, there's a, there's a cultural gap that I'm trying to bridge here. Uh, and I'm here not just as a member of the Senate exec, but also because uh, uh, there has been some disappointment in, in it, much of what you've seen here, although this has changed somewhat since um, uh, uh, in, in over the past year and certainly o over the past uh, couple of months. Um, but uh, when the consultant's report was issued, uh, there was a lot, a lot of uh, disheartening, um, uh, disheartened people, and a lot of complaints emerged. And um, the, there was a feeling that it was, uh, it was inaccurate uh, in, in very broad, broad ways. And uh, and also, it felt to I think most computer people that they just weren't understood. Uh, the culture of computing. Um, it, well, l before I say that, so th in a sense what they wanted was to see something uh, simpler and maybe more principled and maybe just a little bit better. And I think that's also what we're going to need if we want to um, perform better as an institution uh, on, a, on a global scale uh, regarding computing issues. Uh, so the first, things, w first thing I'd like to say is that uh, we need to, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Bettina, could you move to my slide? Thank you. Uh, maybe make it a little smaller. It's, that's a little intimidating. So, um, <laughs> so what's missing? Simplicity. Eliminate the unnecessary. It was not necessary to hire any consultants. Um, and and this, is a, this is an issue for me that's kind of important. Uh, as I've come back to this university, uh, I just, I've been here a little over a year and a half, um, I, but I'm an alumnus. And, um, and I, I, I the first thing that strikes me is whatever the pressure was from uh, the Board of Trustees, uh, I would have reacted by, by speaking uh, not just to the community or interviewing them or surveying them, but giving them some autonomy and uh, actually pr uh, uh, finding out from them what sorts of things they might propose. I would not have brought in anyone from the outside to try to somehow uh, investigate uh, hundreds of people's work. Uh, but in any case, I'll just move on to how... That, so that's... The, from my point of view, that's a reaction kind of, uh, uh, and and I, I'm more ambitious than that. I've, I spent a couple of decades in Silicon Valley doing a lot of very big projects you probably all would have heard of. And I, I kind of, when we're thinking about vision, we're thinking about trying to do things that are new. And to do that, we need to enable innovation. And, uh, and we also need to do the same sort of free inquiry that we do in the academic world. So um, the... Uh, so, actually, communication and mutual respect are those those things that would have been, uh, uh, as basic principles, would have maybe uh, uh, encouraged the administration to go directly to uh, the community as a whole and ask them uh, what they should do in response to the the, uh, the request for um, 
improvements in campus IT. Uh, there is, uh, and this is uh, for me also an institutional problem. I mean, I, I think of this as a little bit of a, um, a, a teaching moment. There's a computer culture. I'm trying to bridge this gap, um, but it is it is a research issue. How do you best do this is not simply an a, a administrative task, but it's a, a task of the university in self-examination to find most of its experts on a topic and actually begin a set of conferences and discussions uh, to find out what the best thing to do would be. So I want to... You want to say something? Okay, that, no, that's fine. I see. I, I understand. All right. So, so how does this how does this work? What is the computer culture? All right. So it's um, it's very important to have. Uh, first of all, you should know that the the uh, it's a successful culture of performance. Uh, everything that you see is because of things uh, in over the last seventy five years that emerged because of uh, the success of bottom up uh, empowerment. Not because people from the top said, hey, we need to have this thing you know, that will change the world. That's not how it happened. People solved problems and things were discovered and economies were made and built. And actually, this is very common in the computer industry. The people who run companies are ex-engineers. So, OK, go ahead. I really apologize for mismanaging the time on this. Um, but I do want to end uh, at as, as close to 5 o'clock as I can. I'm then going to um, give Greg the floor. We're going to adjourn the meeting. Everybody is more than welcome to stay. Scott has agreed to stay and continue. You, I'll let you continue your presentation and then have questions and answers. But um, first, first thing, uh, are there any notices of motion? Okay, you can always email them to us. And then do I hear a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Uh, the, their agency that is putting people first in regards to any kind of restructuring is very important. You can't just survey them. You need to actually ask them what they would do. But this is how this is how creativity and innovation in a free inquiry uh, community or uh, intellectual community happens. Uh, then they have autonomy, and then they learn to cooperate. They learn to be reliant on their own solutions, and then they begin to uh, align themselves to the mission of the university if that is made explicit. Uh, and I think, f for the most part, that is something that the people who are here in IT have done diligently for many, many years. So there, there is not a, they were not managed to obey um, general university initiatives. They were, uh, they decided those things for themselves, that these are the things the university needs, and because they couldn't, those details cannot be ma managed. The density of computing technology and the culture around it is so complex that it is impossible to manage from the top. And this is uh, what you can best do from the top has been generally described, sometimes called participatory management. But for the most part, it's a facilitation. You're facilitating self-management. And uh, in order to have a high quality, you have to allow individuals and groups to self-organize, that is, to, to get the signals, if you will, as to what the organization as a whole is trying to achieve, and then to manage themselves as a community in order to achieve those things. And that includes the uh, things necessary in order to find out, uh, when they have not been made explicit, what the things are that the community needs from, that is, what the, extern uh, the, uh, the university community needs from uh, the IT community. So uh, the idea of top-down management of technology has been a general failure over the uh, last 75 years. And this isn't universally true. That is, in a, in a sense, that there are factories and, and, and a number, numbers, numbers of kinds of service uh, uh, services that happen in IT that can benefit from um, uh, from reorganization, but again, typically from the bottom. That is, the people on the factory floor have a tendency to know what best needs to be done, uh, especially when they begin to talk to each other and when management shares with them things that they know about uh, everything involved in uh, in the make uh, that they may not have known from their particular position. So this, this is very true in the computing world, where we have to maintain external connections with a, a, a very broad uh, and very fast-changing world of, uh, of technological ideas, um, uh, uh, private, uh, private and public software, and, uh, and make use of it for the benefits as we see uh, 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 based on what we know how to do and what other people around us know how to do for the benefit of the university itself. And so you have to... Trust that because you have been trusting that. And because you uh, have been trusting that, you can then simply facilitate 
uh, and, and I think of this as a kind of small transformation of what we're doing already, but literally, say, uh, facilitate the idea of improvement, what things sh uh, should be improved, um, uh, with the uh, IT people at large, and this includes not just the people who will be affected by this, but by computing people across campus. Not all of them will have opinions about this topic because it doesn't affect them, but it, many of them do, and that's maybe a thousand people or so. Simply uh, uh, facilitate a process whereby um, you ask them, well, what would you do better? And, uh, and, and that they, uh, computer people work on fixing things and improving efficiency of of very complex systems and optimizing uh, their own work groups and their own uh, work uh, effectiveness all the time. And cultures, uh, if you look up Agile or Scrum or any number of these things on, um, on the internet, you'll find that they've reached a, a kind of peak uh, uh, pleasing of industry in their ability to self-manage uh, in very flexible ways. And that's there's nothing about the uh, the consultants' reports that even begins to address this primary uh, 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 strength that we could leverage uh, among the very sophisticated people that we have here, who are you know need to not be managed in that way, but actually determine the way they would like to be managed themselves. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and I think I covered everything I need to. And basically, it'll help us to retain people, recruit people, to create a culture. This is my ambition, is to help to create a culture where new ideas come from the bottom. People are able to collaborate openly. Uh, we, the, we, one of the major ideas that come, came out of these discussions was the 10% solution, giving 10% of, uh, uh, giving a 0.1 FTE uh, for collaboration so that computer people across campus could say, oh, you know, we need to solve this problem. We d it doesn't need to be managed. We, we, we could tell people that we're doing it, but we need to solve this problem. It's what we call technical debt. It's something that hasn't been addressed and needs to be addressed or else we're all in trouble. So uh, a 10% sort of collaborative uh, 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 part p uh, put into a pos position description for people would is one of the things that sort of pleases people the most because a great deal can come out of it not just solving problems, but actually new software, things that the university can sell as services and centers of expertise and, uh, and, and various kinds of uh, aids to best practice. Uh, this, this can be actually a cent not a place where expenditure is the primary worry. We can have a very positive ba balance sheet if actually we were able to collaborate because there are many people here that you have in the IT world at this campus who are, were, are ex-CEOs and CTOs and have done some tremendous work, a lot of published work, and really they, would just, they just need time to collaborate more. For the most part, they just do it kind of silently and try to get stuff done. And so this is the primary thing that will act as a kind of solvent for all the issues of improvement that you might be concerned about and create the kind of environment and culture that we need for things like the new CASI initiative. So I'm done. So um, it's no longer really a Senate meeting, so I flew the museum. So the, the, some of the town hall meetings that have been happening are in small groups. And what the next phase is, is people will be meeting on a one-to-one -one basis in all the units all around campus so that everybody gets talked to. And part of what we're trying to do is, is have reporting lines so that technical people who know the work are supervising technical people who are doing the work. And we're putting together skilled people who can collaborate and actually suggest, like Greg was saying, how to do the work better. Um, so we're kind of in that level of in the trenches. But, in, but in, to do that, we have to move the lines into IT, either IS or the library. And so that's making, I think, people um, anxious. But we're not looking to let go people. We're looking to organize them a little better. Museums are in the line. So, so I'm Scott, so I, I, one of the problems with this, uh, with this reorg and, and Making and, and basically predetermining a kind of a binary solution between uh, the library and uh, IS is that, uh, well, first of all, it scares people to death, uh, not because they feel that uh, they're going to lose their job, because they feel they'll lose their environment, their colleagues, any number of things. But one of the, uh, the, you know, the idea of pointless reorg is a very common one in the computer industry and tends to happen at a very high political level for reasons that have very little to do with what is actually uh, a performance problem or any kind of quality problem. And if, if you say that 
uh, you need in order for collaboration to happen, all you, you the only tool that you have is a realignment of reporting lines. Then I, I think you need to think about other kinds of tools because we have we have all kinds of ways of communicating as human beings and collaborating as human beings. And if you, uh, I, I I don't know if you like the uh, point one FTE idea, but uh, uh, we do very much because it's it's more or less the uh, it's more or less the time that we would use to kind of do spectacular things uh, for the campus. So uh, uh, if if you left people in lines that they're in at the moment and, uh, and, and simply asked them to collaborate as appropriate and actually made more information available to them about what was going on, service directories, uh, needs and wants from all departments, uh, uh, ideas that people have, and various other kind of communication tools that we're not able to make use of because we don't have collaboration time built into our PDs. Anyway. I do like that idea. I, I think one of the things that we've suffered by, though, is having people in distributed units with very small budgets, maybe not hired into the right uh, job classification uh, and duplicating certain kind of things. So I think this is going to be a heavy lift, and, and I take your point. We really need to rely on the people who know what they're doing and help them collaborate more.